Life's a journey, isn't it? And work's a big part of it for us all. Now we know sports people have coaches to help them get to where they want to be, but how can coaching help you? So what is coaching? Right, let's go and find out. Hello Richard. Coaching is a conversation. Coaching releases possibility. Coaching is about enhancing all performance, whatever level it is at. Coaching gives you a vehicle, really, for staff, basically, to become better. I love coaching because coaching actually has the power to change people's lives. The purpose is to help the other person with the quality of their thinking. It isn't just about a benefit for an individual and a cosy chat. It's about determining what you want to change. The motivation, the commitment, the performance, the confidence, the presence, all of those things. Somebody can fundamentally grow and change through coaching. Everybody can benefit from having a coach. It's a mirror to help people see things more clearly. Anything's fair game at coaching. You know, it's all about the workplace and how you get more from it. OK, so coaching's a one-to-one, -one, confidential conversation. It's about some aspect of your performance. We're going to look at the business case for coaching. We're going to look at some of the tools and techniques used. We're also going to look at whether you can find your perfect match. But first of all, let's have a look at the power of coaching for real. <laughs> I think the very first session where we sat down and I haven't got a clue what the tool is called, but uh, we used endless pieces of, um, of notelets and basically I had to write down everything that I was doing and then I was made to... Uh, made. <laughs> I was asked. Encouraged. <laughs> Encouraged. <laughs> to, to, to say what I... Made. To say what I, I was directly responsible for and, and, and then to select out of that what I had no hope of achieving with some of the areas. So mm -hmm. from, from going from possibly 100 jobs down to about 20, then made it a, possible for me to go away and think, OK, what are my priorities? What are the key mm -hmm. areas of work I've got to deliver on? And, and the first thing I came up with then was, uh, was a priority list, which I took to my managers and got agreed. And the, the progression from confused state when we first just so much He's going on you know <laughs> yeah. and that, that sort of gray fog that, that Lorna was in to just con consistently it's over time and it's been over a year now yes. uh, that 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 fog's cleared and, and to see see you actually get some control back mm. is absolutely vital I think for me it's that I've I've now got a better work-life balance um, for the team, I think it's, they probably say they've got a much more stroppier person in there who's challenging more, but I think I am more focused and certainly from a service user and carer perspective, the agendas I'm delivering are now being delivered and being delivered on time. So Lorna gained clarity in her role and it really helped her focus on the right things. Here's Phil's story. My work-life balance is frankly terrible, uh, so I have to, you know, I've had to use coaching to get over that. And what coaching's done for me is made me reflect. Uh, what I was doing was unsustainable. I couldn't keep it up. My, my wife never saw me. Uh, my kids forgot my name. So I wanted to be in a situation where I was able to sort of sit back and smell the coffee largely. I mean, I had a problem with the N word. You know, I couldn't say no to anybody, and I think that was part of the problem as well. And when I, I did say no, it was almost that of beauty. I'm more of a calmness around me. I think people appreciate that, especially in one-to-one -one situations where I'm, I'm subliminally taking the coaching on board and then speaking to my staff in a way that, that, are, that I'd want the coach to speak to me, which is, means, and they feel calmer as a result as well. I'm not sort of hooked on, on performance and doing everything in five minutes because I think I was a little bit rushed in the way I dealt with people. Uh, I was rushed in the way I dealt with my own staff. Uh, sometimes team meetings were seen as a hindrance when they shouldn't be, and, and that's, that's enabled me to think, hang on, what, what impact am I having? What I should be doing as a manager is infecting people with positivity, calmness, uh, so they can get about their job well, knowing that I'm supporting them. So that's changed for me, and that's been a positive thing. So coaching's helped Phil with his work-life balance. His kids and family see a bit more of him now. Um, it's actually helped Phil with his management style too. 
Now here's Sarah and Kim with their story. Everything was going on around me and I was almost like an observer and without realising it I was sort of sitting and waiting for the situation to change without taking responsibility or being accountable for making any difference at all. Kim was brilliant because um, she encouraged me to have an open mind and not be judgmental about the different techniques. Um, but the timeline was, was really good because that was highlighting sort of key steps and milestones, but actually really clear on what the end result was. And that was really, really powerful. And it made me realise that to affect change, there were things that I had to take responsibility for. And what the coaching did was not only enable me to see that, but also give me ways to, to get to that um, end result. It took me to a much more positive place and where I wanted to be and where, where the real me is, I think. <laughs> and I've actually heard someone give me feedback about you in the last few weeks, um, saying that they've seen you in action and you exude confidence and, yeah, just seemed to be really loving what you were doing. So Yeah, so very powerful. I said to Jane, you wouldn't even continue with the second coaching session if you didn't think it was benefiting you yeah. and That's you didn't think it was making a change. And I never ever th I never ever thought that it was going to be a chore because you we're, we're always so busy and can you even spare half an hour to sit and almost talk about your strengths and weaknesses but it was a benefit it really was the, the, the drastic change in both my character and how I've actually led into my new role uh, using some of the skills that I adopted from the coaching sessions that's really good that sounds really positive um, with all the coaching you've had and all the benefit, has anybody back at base actually noticed any difference, Ted, or is it still the same? Oh, um, there's been a lot happening since we've had the sessions. Everybody at work has noticed a difference in me. I think some of the actual comments from my peers were actually that I've uh, changed tenfold in the last year. They've actually seen the confidence through me. I feel that I've got confidence and I'm getting a lot of recognition from other other people, other peers, and it's also been noted in my uh, appraisal. So can coaching benefit everyone? Well, here's a trio of chief executives. I think the main thing I got out of it uh, was a, a better self-awareness, which I think is really quite important uh, in, in, in doing this, to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, not necessarily you can solve those problems uh, per se, but having an understanding of how you come over and therefore where you need to work a little harder is really quite important. Because if you don't understand how other people see you, then when you're trying to persuade them or influence them to do things, you won't get the results that you're expecting. And what course coaching has done is mean that I can try things way outside my comfort zone, give them a go, and in a structured way, have a conversation with my coach and saying, that really worked. I saw a difference in the way in which people behaved the improvement that were clearly seen, just by me changing a few of the things that I did. And it's that really that I get the benefit through coaching uh, on a personal level. I have seen people grow and change and that is, you know, it's a wonderful feeling um, to see that happen. I guess you've guessed I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> yeah. Coaching's not about giving people the answer. It's not about giving them advice. It's about helping people find their own solutions. But it does involve a lot of careful listening and a lot of careful questioning. Here's David. I collect what I call BDQs, bloody difficult questions. Um, and they range from everything from what's the risk of success to how many lies are you telling yourself about this? Um, or what lies are you telling yourself about this? A killer pause is something else that I use. There's times when you know, just being quiet, just um, allowing the person, allowing what they've said to sink in. And, you know, in, in our culture here in the West, uh, silences are uncomfortable. So I, I, I use that in a sense by allowing the silence to go a little bit longer than is comfortable, which encourages then the coach, coachee, to say something else. I call it tough love, which is about just sitting down with them and just helping them to acknowledge some of the issues. I've been known to give homework as part of my coaching as well. And it's the sort of homework that you'll really want to do because you want to move yourself on. There's a structure to the coaching conversation and it's usually based around the GROW model. First of all, you establish the goal, the thing you want to work on. Then you look at the reality. What's happening now? You get to grips with what options are open to you. 
before you decide on the way forward. And that means you having the will to get on and do something differently. Coaching's more than just a one-to-one -one conversation, it actually becomes the way you work. And managing in a coaching style is right at the other end of command and control. It's about empowering staff to get on with the job. I really do believe that coaching's the way forward. And that if we enable our staff to do more, then we're going to get more from our staff. I mean, as an accountant, I'm, I guess, a typical sort of linear, rational male most of the time. But actually, coaching's helped me think about, well, actually, the, the, you know, it isn't always linear and rational. And sometimes, actually, understanding where people are, what motivates them, what makes them tick, and trying to sort of find that out first before charging off and doing something. High-performing top teams in particular have one dominant characteristic that sets them apart from low-performing top teams. And that is the amount of time they spend on developing themselves and developing other people. A lot of people want honest, open human beings leading them and creating a really inspiring game to play. I know we're in a period where people, a lot of people haven't got jobs, so I fully accept that. They say these days you either work too hard or you've got no work, you know, there's no middle ground. But the people that are fortunate enough to have work at the moment, yeah, I think they need, they need human beings and they need, why the hell should I do this? Life is short, you know, what's... What's going to get me up in the morning? I think coaching can help people, leaders, managers, uncover the, some of that in themselves. Powerful stuff from Graham. We are lucky to have jobs, so it's even more important that we do the best job we can, and coaching can help with that, and we all need some support. We all need help occasionally. You know, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how wise you are, going to somebody else and tapping into their experience is really helpful. People that come into coaching come into it because they're good already and coaching can only help them improve that performance. David Beckham wouldn't be where he is without a coach, would he? And he's not coached because he's useless at what he does, he's coached because he's good and he knows he can do better. I think it's quite a luxury to have that one-to-one -one time with someone who's trained and can use tools and techniques to, to actually help you move on. How do you find your perfect match for coaching? In the West Midlands coaching pool, there's over 100 coaches, so you're sure to find someone with an approach and style that's right for you. Be very clear about the sort of person you need. So if you're quite a nervous person, um, then maybe choose someone a little bit gentler. If you're quite kind of, you know, bombastic and nobody can teach me anything, um, then you might need someone who will be a bit more like some sports coach. Now, the person that I chose she actually helps me realize that she actually went through the very very things that I've been through and that was a common denominator I didn't realize that from looking at the profile and and that made me feel that I wasn't on my own and and that the concerns that I have or even the positives that I've realized that I've got you can work with them and you can develop it all sounds great this coaching but is there really a business case? A good example of a business case for coaching would be when I managed the ACES programme, which was targeted at raising standards in schools, and particularly GCSE standards. And we introduced a coaching model, which enabled uh, academic coaches to interact with the targeted young people. And the outcome was fantastic improvement in their results because it was focused targets, challenging targets, supported by the, the W question, the way forward and the will to achieve. The International Coach Federation, largest global body in coaching, interviewed 2,000 coaching clients in 60 countries uh, in a study with PricewaterhouseCoopers and delivered stats from that study, one of which was that the median return on investment for businesses invested in coaching was 700%. That's seven times the initial investment. The business case stacks up. We've heard it from a commercial field, we've heard it from education. And closer to home, our own West Midlands coaching pool she looked at the benefits that coaches had from the coaching. They increased in confidence, they had greater self-awareness, they became better at prioritising and they built stronger relationships too. And that's what their managers said, not just the people going through the coaching. I sincerely believe if you go along the once and you have that time for yourself,
100% for you, focusing on you as a manager, as an individual, you will then find out, yeah, this is worth it because it's time out and time well spent. I think anybody goes into coaching session and think I'd never go back there again, I'll be surprised. <laughs>